Ooh-wee. This episode was a spicy meatball. Rick and Morty. My low. That was a dark episode of Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty episode four. Full spoiler conversation. We're going to break it down because I have two theories as to what's going on here. And you'll have to decide which one is which. I'm the man you may know as E from Our Views Will Kill You. And I have been watching Rick and Morty very closely since they fired Justin Roiland. And it seems like things have changed a little bit here. And this is our first taste of a real Morty Rick episode. Morty gets front stage in this one. This is a real, definitely a Morty episode. Definitely a Morty tries to high road Rick episode. So what happens? Let's let's talk about the plot a little bit, and then we'll break down my two theories. One theory is that they're going back to the norms of the old seasons, and they're just trying to be dark and edgy. The other might be a little more sinister. Uh, but let's take a look. This is from Comic Book, and they they do a breakdown of the episode. So what's it about? It's that Samorte. They have a spaghetti dinners that they really like because it brings the whole family together. And then when Morty really wants to know what's some what's the spaghetti? What's the secret of the spaghetti? It's it's people. The the spaghetti is people. It's Soylent Green. The spaghettis. It's the it's the people. So, Rick eventually shows him that they're just not being cannibals, that it's actually a little bit more complex than that. So they go to a planet where the people take, when they take their own lives, their insides turn into spaghetti. <laughs> now, <laughs> uh, so Morty goes to, they he goes to a morgue and they start, um, he tries to show Morty exactly what's going on. Uh, he then it, it he it does a, a men in men in black joke where he wipes his own memory. It's weird they set that up, but it never pays off ever again in the episode, which makes me lean towards my second theory uh, that they're not real interested in the story itself. They're really interested in the message of the story. We'll see how dark I can get. So then Morty decides he has a guilty conscience and he wants to high road Rick. So he wants to pay respects to the people that they were eating spaghetti of. And he said he won't cause any more trouble. And then the family's angry at Morty because he ruined a good thing as usual. But then he's invited to the spaghetti planet where they want to talk to him. So then once he talks to the people of the spaghetti planet, he gets to clear his conscience. But they turn him into some sort of uh, marketing with uh, Morty's Ethical Suicide Spaghetti. Holy cow. And it becomes a whole thing where they deliberately make the planet depressing so that more people are offing themselves so they can have more spaghetti to sell to the rest of the, the universe. And um, then the things start getting wacky and, and Morty's like, you got it. If, if Rick, can you fi- Rick? Can you fix this, Rick? <laughs> this is getting crazy. So he goes and uh, begs Rick to fix it, and Rick's like, "I'll give you." Sa- Rick, it's funny because Rick spoon feeds him this one, but ultimately Rick knows exactly where he's going with this at the end because he has his moral lesson for Morty. So Morty suggests that instead of people, they use people specifically created for spaghetti and then they do a whole clone thing which is like a Gattaca reference I think uh, it's, there's a whole boatload of those movies uh, then they keep working on it and then they may become less people then they have a, a, a spaghetti factory of people who just they're just torsos and then terrorists show up and the whole world gets taken over because they want their spaghetti and um this is where the episode gets gets bleak, where they find the last person who's, I guess, capable of taking their own lives because he only has a few months to live. But Rick sets it up where he's like, all right, we're going to broadcast your whole memories. And then we get to, you know, once you're done, we can eat the spaghetti. So you see this guy who's filled with 
all right, it's 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 like up again, but not nearly as impactful, but also and much more. What's the word I'm looking for? S- not sinister, but definitely not a positive spin. Where the guy breaks up a marriage so that he can marry his his like long lost love. And he can't f- get into engineering school because he, he doesn't know exactly. He, he's not good at engineering, but then he invents his own bricks. And then he becomes a millionaire, but he, but he gets this, he steals this woman away from the world's best carpenter. I don't know if people saw that, who has like four kids with him. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what was up with that. And then, of course, when they crack the guy's ribs open, it's got some tasty spaghetti in there. And then everyone who watches it no longer wants to eat spaghetti because, as Rick notes, this is not a story of right or wrong, but it's a story of the complexities of life. So given context, no one wanted to eat the spaghetti anymore. Rick's final solution, the family gets sub- <laughs> gets Salisbury steaks, and they don't know where they want to go, where they come from. And Rick's like, it's more horrible than the last food. But, you know, it's all good. And the post credit scene is vacuums. Finding out where vacuums come from, I guess. I, I don't know. So thoughts about this episode. So theory one, they're just trying to get back to that good old Rick and Morty that we all want and give us something real, you know, real dark and real edgy. And my, because th- even Adult Swim had to put up like warnings like this episode contains very difficult topics and blah 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 and here's a hotline you can call if you're having problems i'm pretty sure if i saw rick and morty i'm not worried about what they're worried about right so it's a pretty good episode maybe one of the best of the season actually the voices never even thought like there was hints of like oh that's not exactly correct the 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 pronunciation or the intensity of the rick voice or the Morty voice, but for the most part, completely gone. Not, I'm not thinking about it. I'm just in the episodes at this point. But then it comes to my second hypothesis, which is this is an F you to the fans. So let's break it down. It's the spaghetti. This is what you want. You want you want it sweet and you want it spicy. You want the emotional impact, but you also want the 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 gore and the intent like at at one point I was like this this episode's a little intense and the whole cold open with the spaghetti part kind of summed it up for me where you don't care how this it's like it's that old phrase you don't care you don't want to know where the sausage is made you don't want to see it and this was them being like just take it I felt a very intense passive aggressiveness coming off of this episode like we're gonna keep this is what you want you weren't happy with the last two seasons because we're trying to take the show in a different direction we're trying to be a little bit more interesting and inclusive or whatever they were going for trying to expand the lore in new and interesting ways you made us resolve the the you know evil morty plot line that's what you wanted. Well, and and then we end up firing our our guy. Well, this is what we're giving you. You want it dark? We'll give it to you dark. And the whole like terrible version of. Uh, by the way, during the guy's flashbacks, during the up sequence, you get this real terrible uh, cover of Oasis. You want to live forever, which. It, it's another one of those where they like pick out a song. You know, normally they're pretty good at picking out songs, and this one again, felt passive aggressive. They're like, oh, you want us to live forever? Like, and they gave us like a terrible, like acoustic chick version. It's not terrible, but it's just, it, it grinded my gears. So do I think it's one of the best episodes of the season? Yes. Do I like it because they're being passive aggressive? Maybe. I think that that's a little bit of fight. I like to see in them. I don't like them saying F you to the fans, but I do like them putting in edgy episodes that are kind of like F you. Because I think that was the spirit of Rick and Morty originally was kind of like F you, we're going to do what you want. 
or we're going to do what we want. And we, they didn't really care. And then they felt like they had to placate the fans because the reception on the past two seasons was so terrible. I mean, we did infinite reviews here of every episode breakdown of how terrible each one was. And then you, and the story, you know, everybody's heard me rant about Dan Harmon and the story circle and him circle jerking himself and just patting himself on the back of how great of a writer is. And how great everybody else says he is. And all his writers on his staff, oh my God, he's so great. And they're winning awards and they're going on to do She-Hulk, which is the biggest piece of garbage on the face of the earth. So, woo, sorry, ranting a little bit. But I do think, and I want to hammer this home, that they were like, oh, you want the feels? We're going to give you an up sequence. You like that? You like that? You like that? You enjoy that up sequence? Yeah, you do. And I, I just felt this like overwhelming passive aggressive anger seething out of the episode, like because usually Rick's mess, like Rick's uh, nihilism, has some sort of like wacky logic to it, and this was just like, I'm, I'm feeding this to you because this is what you want, and that's me reading in between the lines. And I'm not that angry about it. I like to see a little fight in my shows. You want to pick a fight with the fans? I'm not that angry about it because most people probably aren't going to pick up on this. I'm pretty sure I already saw Screen Rant was raving about how great this episode was and how the 10 greatest gags from it. And everybody's like, yeah, Rick and Morty, dark and crazy and back to form and depressing and we like these. Dep and I think Dan Harmon doesn't like that. And he's not happy that he has to do it. So if he's miserable, guess what? Misery leads to inspiration, just like in the movie Misery. And for those of you who don't know who Oasis is, it's a band from like 20 years ago that was British and trying to be more famous than the Beatles, which was an even older British band. So let me know what you think. Am I being too jaded? I usually am too jaded, but this time I think I've got it. I think Theory 2 is right. I think Dan Harmon is little upset with the way that things are going. He's a little upset in general, and he's taking it out on us, but give it to me, baby. I'm a masochist. I could take more of this punishment if you want to give it to me. Because <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. It was really dark, but I, I didn't laugh a ton, but I like the spirit. I like to see the struggle. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll be really curious what your opinions are. I read all of them. Again, uh, join us. We have memberships now. Please help support the channel as we move bigger and better, give you more quality content that you can enjoy. We also give you free content. It's all free. <coughs> we have our live stream that's up here. We do it Friday nights here on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You get that? It's a fun time, 7.30 Friday nights, p.m. And then uh, we also have a live uh, we also have a podcast, same live stream, but you can get it on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Take us anywhere with you. We are happy to hang out with you. That's a lot to talk about, but thank you. Thank you, thank you. But I am on to the next one. Bye.